Am I the a-hole for giving out potato chips instead of candy on Halloween? Story. Every year at Halloween, we give out chips instead of candy. My wife and I think it's fun for the kids to get chips to go along with their candy. We buy ahead of time at Costco, so there's always plenty. What we don't use will be saved for things like BBQ later in the year, so people can have their own bags of chips. I have a neighbor, Debbie, who is really upset about the potato chips we give put because her kid don't eat them. She thinks we should offer some other options to her kid because he has a disability. I don't think that's fair, and I told her it's extremely rude to ask people who are giving out free stuff for Halloween to change things for just one kid. And I told her I'm not doing it. When her child comes and knocks on my door, he gets chips like everyone else. I let the kids pick the types of chips from the bowl that they like, and I feel like that's more than generous. Debbie said other neighbors are accommodating her child disability for Halloween, and I should think of others. I'm older, so I think a child should be grateful for whatever they get for free on Halloween and not expect special treatment for a disability when getting free items. Edit. My wife and I decided we don't want to deal with it anymore and we'll be donating the chips to the local school and churches for their Halloween party. Lights off at our house. Response 1, NTA. So my kid is on the autism spectrum and he only eats Skittles Littles and Sour Punch Bites. He will not touch any other candy and trying to bribe him to taste it just leads to him gagging until he pukes. You're not responsible for accommodating every effing kid on Halloween. You're a freaking person not some business slash organization giving out free candy. The only accommodation I would ever think of asking for would involve me, the parent, providing the treats and just asking the neighbors to give my kid that thing. Nope, nope, nope. Reply one, exactly. Some children, like yours, will only eat a select few things and some kids are allergic to certain things. The person handing out candy isn't responsible to ensure that every single child gets what they can eat. The point of going through candy at the end of the night is to make sure you pull out anything that a child can't slash want eat. Reply 2. The point of going through candy at the end of the night is to make sure you pull out anything that a child can't slash want eat. Incorrect. The point of going through the candy at the end of the night is to collect my mommy tax laugh out loud. My brother and I would unload all of our candy at the end of the night and trade. We were very serious about it. It would take almost the same amount of time as trick-or-treating laugh out loud. Reply three, being a person who can't stand chocolate, that trading part is a major event. My siblings and I luckily have very different tastes, so we all would be happier at the end of the trading session. School lunchtime was prime trading grounds for the next couple weeks. The kid can trade the dang chips if they don't want them. Reply four, definitely true and to make sure nothing is open but what I'm trying to say is that this neighbor can either skip the house or eat the chips herself laugh out loud. She's not going or maybe she would to go to every single house and make sure they have candy her child will eat. Reply 5. I think everyone does a candy trade on Halloween whether with siblings or friends. My sister hated peanuts and I wasn't a fan of Reese's so it's give her mine for her Snickers and my mom got the Butterfingers and Baby Roots laugh out loud. Response to, she thinks we should offer some other options to her kid because he has a disability and she's free to think that. She just isn't free to require it of you. Wow, laugh out loud, the nerve. If her kid doesn't like it, he can trade with another kid for something he does like, just like the rest of us and our kids have done. Not the a-hole. Reply one. When my siblings got home from trick or treating, I remember we all sat on the floor and did swaps of candy. I traded licorice for Tootsie Pops, N not the a-hole. They can skip your house, reply two. When I was a kid, we lived in an old MA coastal village, lots of cottages close together in the town center. A group of us went out together with the teen brother of my friend supervising. He'd have been considered too old to trick or treat back then otherwise. We filled more than half a pillowcase of candy in a couple of hours. Then we went back to friend's house for her birthday cake. Yup, 10 slash 31 birthday. And the six plus of us would sit and trade candy. It was great fun. The only issue with chips is potentially getting crushed in the bag. Oh well, it's a risk. Reply three. So many of my friends were allergic to chocolate as kids. They just came out trick or treating with the rest of us and traded all their chocolate after. Most complaint I ever heard was, 
Aw, oh, I wish I wasn't allergic to chocolate. Trading is the best part of Halloween anyway. Response three, NTA, new level of entitlement there. Part of Halloween for me was always trading the stuff you don't like with friends as we trick or treated or siblings when I got home. If nobody wanted it, it went to my parents. Reply one, with a parent like this, you know that kid probably doesn't have friends or isn't allowed to do trades. Reply two, what many parents do for kids with allergies is have then go trick or treating like a normal kid, then switch or trade the candy with allergy friendly ones they can eat. It's almost like the mom could accommodate her child instead of asking a stranger to. Response four, you're not required to provide snacks for any of the children. If the child doesn't like chips slash can't eat chips, he can skip your house. It's not like you're causing the child to starve, not the a-hole. Reply one, he can also grab the chips and use it to trade with other kids. When I was growing up, getting treats you didn't like and trading at Halloween or lunch in school was super normal. Reply two, OP is definitely not an a-hole. My folks basically do the same thing. They buy a box or two of chips from Costco and a bag of candy. And each kid basically gets three pieces of candy or a bag of chips. And at the end of the night, start just giving kids both. One year we only did chips and I remember a kid walking away talking to her dad being like, this isn't candy. I kind of had a laugh, but I saw him take it and start eating it almost immediately. He was probably like, if you don't want it, I'll gladly eat this small bag of Doritos. Reply three, he can skip your house exactly, just like we always skipped the guy's house who gave out toothpaste and floss. Response five, NTA. Debbie sounds like an extremely entitled person. What about kids with chocolate allergies? Should they go around demanding potato chips? Reply one, was literally just thinking this. My child has a dairy allergy. She's still very young. We've taught her to take what she's given and say thank you. We later go through the sweets and take out anything that she can't eat. Whilst I appreciate the child may struggle with the concept of accepting things politely as we do or just saying no thank you, the mother bloody well can reply to. I think the problem is that in some cases it's actually the other way around. The children seem to have acquired manners they couldn't have gotten from the entitled parents. Reply three, as an allergic child, I would always go through my candy with my parents and take out the stuff I couldn't have. Sometimes my brother would trade with me, sometimes he wouldn't. Since I'm now allergic to the smell of peanuts, my kids have learned to ask if there are peanut-free options, but they are polite about it. Sometimes they get items with peanuts, which we remove from their loot. These peanut products go to a friend. I never would demand someone would provide allergen-free treats for me on Halloween, but if given the choice, of course I, or now my kids, would choose the peanut-free option. Reply four. Our neighborhood doesn't get trick-or-treaters, but for school we started to do fidget toys. We get big packs on Amazon, and if it's more, then the amount of kids in class we save for other school holidays. Laugh out loud. I had a pack of like 100 mini poppets. Kids took them for two school holidays. It's common now for some places to do teal buckets for kids with allergies or disabilities. Reply five, yes, the teal pumpkin project. Very important, and I'll be participating this year and for the rest of my life. Response six, info. Why can't the kid eat chips? Is it due to his disability or does he just not like chips? I think you're not the a-hole either way, but the mom herself may be worse depending on this. Reply one, it really doesn't matter if he can't eat chips or won't eat chips. What the hell kind of entitlement is going on in the neighbor's head to think she can tell other people how to spend their money? Reply two, oh yeah, for OP, the judgment doesn't change either way. I'm just wondering how big of an H the mom is because if it's just that he doesn't like chips, that's her weaponizing his disability to give him, and maybe her, special treatment. Which is a lot worse than if she was just asking because he physically can't eat chips. Reply three, there is no difference no matter her reasoning. My kid has celiac disease. She can't eat a lot of what she collects on Halloween. We have safe ones at our house for her to trade out for at the end of the night. As the parent, you are the one to accommodate if an accommodation like that is needed. Not all your neighbors. Reply four. I mean, the reasoning matters toward the anus of the mom, not OP. The difference I was trying to clarify is if the mom is going around saying weaponizing her kid's disability for special treatment that is unnecessary versus if she's asking for special treatment because the kid can't eat chips because of his disability, it doesn't impact O.P. quote S not the a-hole score and OP isn't obligated to give special accommodations either way. It's just a curiosity. 
The mom is acting entitled either way, but in one version, she's a lot worse than the other. Reply 5. I'm confused why so many people aren't understanding your question laugh out loud. So you don't feel crazy. I'm curious her reasoning too. Response 7. Your update is so upsetting. Not the a-hole. That's Halloween. My kids always get something they don't like or love. Reply 1. Yeah, it is upsetting, especially for the kids who are probably excited to go to the chip house. OP and his wife don't have to hand out treats, but it's still sad that one entitled adult had to complain. Reply 2. I know I was so sad for him that he decided to go lights off. I love sitting on the porch with a Halloween-themed cocktail handing out candy or chips and seeing all the cute and creative costumes. Reply 3. Yeah, I don't know why they would let one entitled parent ruin the night for them. Other kids probably enjoyed the chips as a change of pace. Response 8, Debbie, is an a-hole. You get what you get and you don't get upset. They literally teach this saying in prec. I'm not a fan of PB. Do you think my mommy went around and asked people to not hand out Reese's? Hell no. The parents are the ones who eat all the Halloween stuff their kid doesn't like. It's always been this way. Reply 1, 100% I hate caramel, toffee, and fudge. So my dad got most of my Halloween and Christmas chocolate, ha 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 ha. But I love PB, so I'll have yours. Response 9, NTA. This is some entitled neighbor. Part of trick or treating is sometimes getting something you don't like. Tell her she can skip your house. I'm older too and I put up with very little BS anymore. We actually quit giving out candy on Halloween because we have an a-hole dog, barks non-stop for folks at the door and tries to escape. It's not worth the aggravation. Husband non trained him while I has still worked. It'll be our last dog. Response 10. No, I saw the edit. Please don't punish the other children because of one A-H mom. Halloween is about the neighborhood and the kids. Uh, um, just tell her that she's free to skip your house, but you are firm with your options. There was one guy that would pass out chips instead when I went trick or treating and I loved it. I would have really missed if he had stopped because of some other kid's mom. Reply one. Yeah, I can't imagine this conversation with this entitled parent lasting longer than a quick exchange. Bobby doesn't like chips. Can you have something else on hand for him when we come by? He has a disability, you know. Sorry, that's all we have. You're free to skip our house if the chips upset Bobby that much. Uh, end of story. Continue to hand out chips to other kids. Why did this go any further? Reply two. I don't get why OP went nuclear on the update. The people were on their side. This says to me that there are missing reasons. Response 11, just my two CTs, Halloween is a big deal for me and for the neighborhood. I always give out the best candy and lots of it, but I am sensitive to the fact that not every kid can have candy nor for whatever reason. It is nothing to spend an extra five or 10 bucks to have a smaller bucket of pencils, erasers, bracelets, glow sticks, whatever for those kids. I am not saying the world has to cater to everyone, but come on, it's just a fun holiday that everyone should get the chance to enjoy. Reply one, it seems silly to me. It's one house out of however many giving away chips instead of candy. If the kid is fine with candy, then getting something he doesn't like at one house shouldn't be a big deal. I didn't always get candy I liked at every house I went to on Halloween. It's not the end of the world and it didn't stop me from enjoying the holidays. Reply two, I'm with you. As a matter of fact, because there are a number of children who have special needs slash sensitivities in our community, I started buying other stuff. Bouncy balls from Party City. The first year I gave kids a choice. Almost all of them chose the bouncy balls over the candy was ye. From then on, I skipped the candy and bought the bouncy balls. From little kids to big kids, they've all been so excited. If you put a teal pumpkin on your porch, that's a sign that you are aware of kids with disabilities and you have something for them. Reply three, I agree. I always stocked a couple pieces of gluten-free candy for a buddy with celiacs. I don't think I had to, but the kid's life is already really hard. They miss out on a lot. Birthday party treats and conventional holidays and class cupcakes and a $2 Sour Patch Kid Packet made one moment one teeny weeny bit easier. The mom sounds obnoxious, but that's not the kid's fault. Reply four, it's just a fun holiday that everyone should get the chance to enjoy and everyone can still enjoy it. A child should not expect to get something they like for free from every single house. You don't like it? Trade it with another kid for something different. The entitlement on that mother is absurd. 
and it's a holiday for all to enjoy right. So why is ODOT P quote S enjoyment of giving out chips not being considered? Reply 5. We do non-candy to take to school. I found that where we are in Alabama, you don't get big neighborhoods to trick or treat. You have one house, then have to go ten houses down, and then one two blocks away. People have to drive house to houses or do candy walks in business districts or trunk or treats. Our neighborhood gets zero kids and there are zero houses handing out. Where we lived in San Diego growing up, we could walk full neighborhoods for hours. Now we go to the base to trick or treat. Most do non-candy and candy. Our last base one house gave parents margaritas and their neighbors did hot chocolate. People also gave away shots. Ha ha. Response 12. NTA. But Debbie is free to purchase enough of the candy her kid likes, to distribute the candies to all the neighbors, and then let her child collect these candies back. Response 13, I see a lot of people commenting that old Debbie can give you something different to give to her precious little angel when he comes by for trick or treating, but I still even find that wild as hell of a request. Instead, Debbie should be teaching her child that the world does not and will not cater to you, disability or not. She's entitled as hell and inevitably raising an entitled kid on top of that. Not to mention, she's trying to control everything around her child to cater to him, which will just lead to absolute shock when he gets older and realizes that isn't how real life works. Response 14, he can trade his chips for something he likes from other kids. Haggling over our candy was one of the most fun things about Halloween. Response 15, could this be disability related, such as a life-threatening potato allergy? Sure, is it likely? No. What seems more likely is the kid has a disability completely unrelated to what he's able to eat and also has a food preference, and mom thinks the latter should be accommodated on account of the former. If Junior would rather have a pack of Skittles than a bag of Miss Vicky's, he's free to offer a trade to the other kids. Response is 16. Edit. My wife and I decided we don't want to deal with it anymore, and we'll be donating the chips to the local school and churches for their Halloween party. Lights off at our house. And they ruined it for everyone else. Don't blame you. Not the a-hole. Response 17. NTA. Every time I've seen this trick or treat alternative concept, it involves the parents explaining, asking, and giving the neighbors an appropriate treat to hand out to their child if they agree. She's just demanding you do the work and being rude about it. It's trick or treat, not Burger King. She can't have it her way. Response 18. NTA. I didn't like everything I got on Halloween. I said thank you with a smile and went on. We didn't ask for something specific. Sure, the few times I could pick, I went for what I liked or what my parents liked, but when I couldn't, it didn't matter. It was fun to walk around and see all the decorations and costume. When I got home, I made two piles of candy, what I liked and what I didn't. What I didn't my parents ate or if they didn't want it, we gave it to my aunt for her candy bowl for guests. What no one ate did get tossed once it went stale. Response 19, NTA, if she wants you to have options on hand for her kid, then she can fund it. She could stop by the day before and give you a couple out of her supply to give to her child. Or better yet, she could skip your house. Response 20, NTA, it would be one thing if your neighbor knocked on your door with a treat for her son in hand like, Hey, I am your neighbor. My son has some special needs and isn't a fan of most candies. I was planning to take him around the neighborhood for the same Halloween experience. Will you be home handing out candy? Could I give you a treat to put on the side for when my son comes by to help make this experience enjoyable for him? If my neighbor approached me with this request, I would be more than happy to oblige. ID just stick a sticky note on the treat and keep it near the front door where I wouldn't forget. Expecting you to go out and purchase something extra on the other hand, not gonna fly. If your kid needs extra accommodations, it should be on you to make sure they are available. Knocking on your neighbor's doors and expecting them to make an extra purchase for your benefit is simply entitled. If your neighbor wants to advocate slash encourage others to have a wider variety of Halloween treats available, she should be doing it online like all the other annoying entitled people not accosting anyone directly.